Hello, welcome. If you are new around here, my name is Kweku and I am a pharmacist. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the medication naproxen. We're going to take a look at what it is, what it is used for. We will take a look at some side effects as well as some best practices if you're taking naproxen. And as a quick reminder, this video and all of my other videos are for informational purposes only and it's not intended to be a substitute for medical advice from your physician. So what is naproxen? Naproxen is a medication that belongs to a class called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. We typically call them NSAIDs for short. It works by inhibiting an enzyme in the body called cyclooxygenase, which we also shorten as COX. There are two of them, COX-1 and COX-2. It turns out that naproxen inhibits both COX-1 and COX-2. And in doing so, naproxen produces three main effects, a pain reliever, a fever reducer, and also an anti-inflammatory, as the name suggests. Here in the US, naproxen is available either as a prescription or as an over-the-counter medication, and it is sold under various brand names, some of which include Aleve, Anaprox, Naprilan, and EC Naproxen, just to name a few. Naproxen is used in a wide variety of scenarios, some of which include headache, back pain, pain due to gout, menstrual pain, acute tendinitis, which is inflammation of the tendons, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, and fever, like we mentioned earlier on. The dose recommendation for the over-the-counter version, which contains 220 milligram tablets, is one tablet twice a day or every 12 hours. And this is typically enough for most minor aches and pains, including headache and back pain. However, for the prescription strength, which comes either as a 500 milligram or as a 550 milligram tablet, typically you see doses of one tablet twice a day. In some cases of osteoarthritis or other serious conditions, if a lower dose is tolerated, it's not unusual to see a dose of up to 1,500 milligrams a day given, but the recommendation is to do this for only up to six months. Naproxen is generally well tolerated if it is taken just for occasional pains and inflammation every so often and if so if you stay within the dosing guidelines. However, like any other medication, it is not devoid of side effects. The most commonly reported side effects to naproxen are gastrointestinal events and these typically occur the higher the dose or the longer that you take naproxen. Some of these gastrointestinal side effects include constipation, heartburn, abdominal pain, and nausea occurring in about 3-9% to of the people that take naproxen. Gastrointestinal bleeding and ulcers have also been reported and I'll talk a little bit more about that when I talk about the precautions. Other relatively commonly reported side effects include edema or fluid retention, rash, itching, dizziness, tinnitus or ringing in the ear, as well as for some people difficulty breathing. Now, the next set of side effects are very rare, occurring in less than 1% of the population, but they tend to be the serious ones if they do occur. And these include anemia, pancreatitis, which is inflammation of the pancreas, uh, for some people liver failure, or even jaundice have been reported in people taking naproxen. And let me stress again, these are very rare, occurring in less than 1% of the population. Now, let's look at some precautions or some warnings that you should be aware of. The first one is gastrointestinal perforation and bleeding. And this is common to all NSAIDs, not necessarily naproxen alone. Naproxen is known to increase that risk and this perforation can occur in the stomach, in the small intestine, or even in the large intestine. And people with a history of peptic ulcer uh, have a more than tenfold increased risk for developing such GI bleeds. Also, other factors that may increase the risk of GI bleeds and perforation is if you take other medications concurrently with the naproxen, say for example, corticosteroids like prednisone, or if you're on uh, anticoagulant therapy like warfarin, or if you take uh, medications we call SSRIs, uh, which include Zoloft, Paxil, Prozac, or if you take another NSAID, maybe aspirin or ibuprofen concurrently as you're taking the naproxen. These medications all increase your risk of gastrointestinal bleeding and perforation. Other factors that increase the risk of bleeding with naproxen include smoking or consumption of alcohol while you take naproxen or older age. I mean, the older you are, the greater your risk of such gastrointestinal bleeding. To minimize such risks, it is advisable to stick to one NSAID at a time and also to use the lowest effective dose for the shortest duration of time. It also helps sometimes to have food in the stomach before you take it, so not taking naproxen on an empty stomach is definitely a good idea. 
Naproxen has also been associated with an increased risk of or incidence of heart attacks and stroke. So if you are somebody who has a history of heart disease, if you have what they call cardiac arrhythmias, which is irregular heartbeats, or if you have any kind of coronary artery disease, it's definitely a good idea to double check with your doctor to make sure that you are a good candidate to be taking Naproxen. Naproxen has also been associated with new onset of hypertension or worsening of pre-existing hypertension. So it's definitely a good idea if you're going to be taking naproxen for an extended period of time to be monitoring your blood pressure just to make sure that it stays within range. And interestingly, naproxen also tends to affect some blood pressure medications, rendering them not as effective as you would want them to be. And this include the classes, the, what we call the ACE inhibitors or the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, which include lisinopril, enalapril, uh, benazepril, all those ones ending in IL, and also thyroid diuretics and the most common one that I can think of is hydrochlorothiazide. Uh, naproxen, long-term use of naproxen has been shown to reduce its efficacy in some people. So if you're one of these people taking these medications, definitely double check and make sure that the blood pressure medication is doing exactly what it is supposed to do. Naproxen has also been known to aggravate kidney disease. So if you have a history of kidney disease, it will be a good idea to double check with your doctor to see if it is okay for you to be taking naproxen. Naproxen should also be avoided during the third trimester of pregnancy, uh, starting at 30 weeks, due to risk of harm to the fetus. So while it is theoretically possible to experience these side effects even on short-term therapy with naproxen, generally most people taking it for short-term, occasional, headache here, backache here, are able to tolerate it for the most part. Thank you so much. I hope you found some value in this video. If you did, do well to share with other people. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. Thank you so much. I will catch you on the next video.